Okay, so we are going to look at chapter or section 2.4, chemical reactions. And here you're going to find out about bonds breaking and forming during chemical reactions and how chemical reactions release or absorb energy. So to start off, bonds break and form during chemical reactions. Chemical reaction is changes, uh, changes substances into different substances by breaking and forming chemical bonds. So you have two parts to these chemical reactions. You have the reactants, which are changed during a chemical reaction. They are found on the left side of a chemical equation. You also have the products, which are made or produced by the chemical reaction. And those are found on the right side of a chemical equation. You have uh, bond energy is the amount of energy that breaks a bond. Now two things happen. When you break a bond, energy is added. When a bond is formed, energy is released. Okay, so energy is added to break bonds, so you need energy to break the bonds. And energy is given off or released when a bond forms. Now a key thing to keep in mind here is that when a chemical, uh, when a reaction is at equilibrium, the reactants and products form at the same rate. So right here, the arrows in the equation show the reaction going both ways. When carbon dioxide concentrations are high, like typically in our cells, the reaction moves towards the right, so the carbon dioxide in water yields carbonic acid. However, in our lungs, carbon dioxide concentrations are low. So the reaction goes the opposite direction, um, where carbonic acid over here breaks down into carbon dioxide and water. So when a reaction takes place that is both equal in both directions, that's when a state of equilibrium is reached. And equilibrium is when both the reactants and products are made at the same rate. So chemical reactions release or absorb energy. We're going to talk about three different um, types. We're going to talk about activation energy, which can be broken down into exothermic, where energy is released, exo meaning exit, and endothermic reactions, endo meaning uh, absorbed. So activation energy is the energy that is needed to be absorbed to start the original chemical reaction. So the picture I have here is essentially activation energy is the energy you would need to get the rock. Um, once the rock is on top of the hill, it's going to roll down by itself. So the activation energy is the energy you would need to push this rock up the hill. Once you have enough energy, the reaction will occur. So once you get the activation energy where it needs to be, the uh, reaction is going to happen. So as you can see over here, we have reaction progress, energy, and as we increase the energy, once you hit the activation energy, you have enough energy into the reaction so it can occur. So let's talk about exothermic reaction. This is when energy is released. Reactants have higher bond energy than products. And remember, the reactants are on the left of the chemical equation and the products are on the right. Excess energy is being released by the reaction. The products in an exothermic reaction have a lower bond energy than the reactants. And this difference in bond energy is released to the surroundings. So again, here's another picture that's going to demonstrate that. 
So again, an exothermic chemical reaction releases more energy than it absorbs. The last type is an endothermic reaction, which is a chemical reaction that absorbs more energy than it releases. So reactants have a lower bond energy than the products. Energy is absorbed by the reaction to make up the difference. So here's another visual for you guys. The products in an endothermic reaction have a higher bond energy than the reactants. And the difference in bond energy is absorbed through the surroundings. So again, an endothermic chemical reaction absorbs more energy than it releases. And that is all that there is to section 2.4. The key things that you guys need to focus on, let's go back to here. The key things you guys need to focus on is make sure you know what a chemical reaction is. Make sure you understand reactants and products and where they are in terms of a chemical reaction. You need to make sure you understand the concept of bond energy. Um, what does it mean to have chemical equilibrium? And then be able to discuss exothermic and endothermic reactions in just the context that the book has. You guys don't need to get um, crazy. Remember, this isn't a chemistry class. This is bio. We're going to get through this biochemistry and things will be good. So what you need to do now, since you've watched the whole video, is you need to come up with some questions and come to class with those questions ready to have a discussion with your peers. Hopefully you've been taking notes. The best part of the video is that you can repeat it and go through it as many times as you need to.